was disgusted then when I did it. I'm disgusted now. I went and I sought out professional help. I had to go into therapy. What's going on, everyone? Welcome to the Behavioral Arts. My name is Spidey, and I use my degree in sociology and psychology, my certifications in criminal interrogation and body language analysis, and over 10 years' experience as an award-winning mentalist to teach people behavioral analysis and practical psychology on stages and television shows all over the world. For several years now, multiple celebrities have alluded to and flat out accused rapper and music producer Diddy for participating in both deviant and illegal activities. Things got a lot more serious towards the end of 2023 when multiple women sued Diddy or P Diddy or Puff Daddy for numerous accusations, including harassment, trafficking, physical abuse, and sex assault. One of the women who sued him was his longtime ex-girlfriend Cassie Ventura. And one day after she presented the lawsuit, they settled out of court for an undisclosed amount. At the time, Diddy commented on all these allegations and said, I did not do any of the awful things being alleged and claimed that all these women who were suing him were just looking for a quick payday. But that all changed a couple of days ago when security footage leaked of Diddy and Cassie in a hotel hallway. And I don't want to show that footage or go into the details of what it was. I'll leave a link in the description. You guys can look it up. It's horrible. At the very least, suffice it to say that it's evidence of some of these charges that were alleged against him right there on camera. And it honestly looks like something out of a movie. It's really bad. Shortly after the video was publicly released, Diddy posted a video on his own Instagram where he addressed it and apologized for his behaviors. And in this video, we're going to look at that apology video. We're going to look at his facial expressions and word choice to try to determine is this a real apology or is he deflecting and hiding something darker? Let's dive right in. It's so difficult to reflect on the darkest times in your life. Sometimes you gotta do that. I was fed up. I mean, I hit rock bottom, but I made no excuses. My behavior on that video is inexcusable. I take full responsibility for my actions in that video. A lot of interesting stuff happening with his facial expressions and there's one key moment there where we're getting to very important pieces of information. It's as he says that it's hard to reflect on the darkest moments of your life. And as he's saying darkest, we see his eyes closed for a moment as he's talking. And this is what we call an eye block. Now the research on eye blocking shows that we do this to focus on something, either keep a thought in or keep a thought out. So it's something negative, we might do this because we don't want to face it. So when we're talking about something dark like this, it's possible to have that eye block because we don't want to face this idea. But very often we also use eye blocking to emphasize something. We're talking to show how serious this thing is. But there's something interesting in the way it happens here. There is a ton of research on the gestures that we use when we speak. In most cases, these are called illustrators, whether it's with the hands or with the eyes. These are gestures that happen as we're speaking that help us communicate the thought more effectively. Now, in almost every single study about these gestures, they found that when you're speaking, the gesture comes exactly with the thought that it illustrates or just a little bit before. And that was such a great example of it. As I said just a little bit before, the hand came up to illustrate just a little bit at the same time, naturally. Sometimes it also comes just a little bit before, so it might go just a little bit. So the hand comes up to illustrate what we're about to say. The reason for this is simple. It's one thought being communicated with both word and gesture. So the gestures are synchronized with the words. Sometimes the gesture comes out a little earlier because we just need an extra second to find the right word. So the thought is coming out, it's just the words are a little bit delayed. Think about how off it feels for me to say that sometimes the gesture comes out just a little bit after the word, right? That feels unnatural. It feels like there was an afterthought that said, okay, do this gesture to drive that point home because the words weren't enough. And it's exactly for that reason that in behavioral analysis, we look for that synchronicity. We're looking for the gestures to match the words because the moment they fall out of sync, when the gesture comes after the word, it's pretty clear that this is the person really trying hard to add this gesture to drive the point home. In other words, they're trying to sell you something as opposed to just trying to tell you something. So with that in mind, the way I would expect with natural rhythm for that eye block to happen in that sentence would be as the person is saying darkest, to go the darkest moments of our lives. That's one thought coming out and expressing how dark this moment was. But if we watch P. Diddy, that's not what we're getting. 
Take a look. It's so difficult to reflect on the darkest times in your life, the darkest times in your life. His words and volume are emphasizing darkest. That's what's being emphasized. But the eye block is coming after that on the way down from that emphasis as he's saying times. In other words, the emphasis with his voice and with his eyes are happening at two different places. Now this stood out to me especially for a very successful music producer and rapper because rappers are the heavyweight champions of illustrators. As they're rapping, they're illustrating and emphasizing with gestures and words very well on the beat. So that moment really felt to me like the word darkest came out and then as an afterthought, we get this extra emphasis for him to drive that point home. The other thing that's really interesting in that moment is that as his eyes are closing to emphasize that moment, even if it's late, we're seeing his eyebrows come down and close together. And that was really, really interesting because as you watch that entire first clip and the entirety of the rest of this video that we're gonna look at soon, his eyebrows barely move. Now my regular viewers know that I pay a lot of attention to the eyebrows because they communicate a lot. Emotion, intention, emphasis. And when I see no movement in the eyebrows, I wanna know is it that they don't move or that they can't move? Because if they can't move, we could speculate as to why it is. You know, it could be cosmetic surgery or certain procedures or some kind of nerve damage that makes it so they physically can't move their eyebrows and we just consider that part of their baseline. But when I do see movement in the eyebrows, it allows me to know, okay, they can move. So in moments where we're not seeing that movement, it allows me to think, well, maybe it's because the emotion or the emphasis just isn't there. Now, that being said, when it comes to Diddy, his eyebrows very rarely move and it's been this way for decades. We can attribute this to cosmetic procedures, maybe he's had some or some kind of condition, I don't know. But if you go look at talk shows that he's done, interviews that he's done, they very, very rarely move. They'll go a long time without ever emphasizing, without ever being confused or anything. They just stay still. So what that means for me is that I know his eyebrows can move, but I also know that they don't move. So as we go on with this, I can't expect the same kind of emphasis or emotion in the eyebrows that we would expect to see on somebody else. His baseline is just simply different from that. Let's talk about word choice right there in the beginning because he's saying sometimes it's really difficult to reflect on the darkest times of your life, but sometimes you have to do that. Now that pronoun choice is really, really important. He's not saying that lately I've had to reflect on the darkest moments of my life and I just had to go through that. It's not I. For someone who's gonna be using I, I, I a lot, here he's talking about you how you have to reflect on the darkest moments of your life. We often see this type of language in people who are apologizing for something because they want you to be able to relate to their situation, right? They're trying to say, you know, we all have our bad moments. So you go, yeah, you know what? I guess it's true. I've had bad moments as well. So I can kind of relate and maybe I can cut him some slack. But here's the difference. This is a very, very dark moment. I would like to think that most of us don't have dark moments anywhere close to this kind of behavior. So for him to come out and say, you know, sometimes you have to reflect on your darkest moments and get us to go, yeah, you know, I have to do that as well, is a little misleading because the dark moments that we have to reflect on don't come anywhere close to this behavior for most of us. He goes on to say, my behaviors in that video were inexcusable. I take full responsibility for my actions in that video. And notice how it's my behaviors, my actions, that video, but there's no real details. What video, what behaviors, what actions, right? If someone's watching this and they don't know what happened or what this video is, there's zero context being given here. He's not saying what he's actually taking responsibility for. Now in behavioral analysis, there's something we call psychological distancing. This is when people use words that are a little less severe than the action they're being accused of as a way to distance themselves from how horrible the action is. So they might say something like, took instead of stole, or they might say something like hurt instead of kill or murder, just because that's more in line with their image of themselves. It's less bad. But this goes so far beyond psychological distancing. This is like psychological muting. It's not that he's using softer terms to describe his actions, he's just not describing his actions at all. It's almost like you could take this apology and just apply it to any scenario and it would still work. Now there are a few reasons I believe he's doing this. One, it is extreme distancing. By not talking about it, by not describing it, he could keep it far from him. But another really big reason that I believe he's doing it this way is because of this. I think this is an action that 
he's done numerous times in a lot of other cases. And if he specifically apologizes for this one, eventually when it's revealed that there were other cases, people will go back and go, well, how come you didn't apologize for all these other ones when you took full responsibility? It seems like you only apologize about that one thing when you could have said, listen, here's all these other times it happened and I'm sorry for all those things. Body language wise, there is a lot happening during the end of that statement with I take full responsibility for my actions in that video. So you'll notice that if we go back to illustrators, as he says, I take full responsibility, we get an illustrator very well synced with that moment as he goes, full responsibility for my actions in that video. And as he continues to talk, that emphasis, that chin down emphasis, turns into a no gesture. I take full responsibility for my actions in that video. Now I always talk on the channel about this gesture being the most misinterpreted gesture in all of body language. I can't tell you how often. I see people in the comments, the moment they see this, they go, oh my God, the person's lying because his head is saying no as he's talking. In reality, this is a very versatile gesture. It doesn't only have one meaning. Yes, it can suggest inner conflict. It can suggest that there's disagreement with what we're saying, but we also do it in disbelief. We also do it in disapproval. So if I'm talking about this video of his and I tell you it's horrible what he did in that video, that doesn't mean I don't think it's horrible. It means I can't believe what he did. So in that moment, does it definitely mean that this means nothing other than he doesn't actually take responsibility? Look, it's very possible. It's possible that he's saying, I take full responsibility. No, I don't. I don't really take full responsibility. But it's a little presumptuous to assume that that's the only thing that it could mean. At the beginning of that statement, as he's saying, my behavior on that video was inexcusable, we see something really interesting happen on his face. It happens actually three times in a row. So as he's saying, my behaviors on that video twice, if you look at his left side of his face, you almost see this kind of very quick scrunching. We even see his left eye get a little bit smaller. And if you look at the left side of his cheek, there's a bit of an upwards movement. It's almost like he's talking a little more out this side of his face. And then as he's saying is inexcusable, almost exactly what the is, we see it on the right side. So again, we see this kind of upward scrunching and you see the line on the right side of his face as he's saying that. So there's like the scrunching on the right side. I'll play it for you a couple of times now for you to really see it. But here's a really exaggerated version of what's happening. My behavior in that video is inexcusable. And if you really want to see it, look at his upper cheeks here, because that's where you'll see that scrunching and movement the most. Here it is. My behavior on that video is inexcusable. Now, the reason I'm mentioning this is because the research has shown that pretty much everywhere in the world, including cultures that are completely detached from the developed world, a one-sided scrunching on only one side of the face or tension on one side of the face denotes contempt a feeling of moral superiority or judging or looking down on something. So whether it's this kind of thing or this kind of thing, often with that kind of sideways look, but even if it's not there, just this kind of thing, usually suggests a little bit of judgment towards something. However, and I find this really interesting, when it comes to rappers, for some reason, a lot of them naturally talk with this one-sided scrunching on one side of his face. Ice Cube is really well known for this. He's constantly talking like this, but I've seen it on Snoop Dogg, I've seen it on Jerul, I've seen it on countless rappers, and it's common for Diddy as well. I've seen it in other interviews. It's not as pronounced as Ice Cube, for example, but very subtly every now and then, we see these scrunches on the sides of his face. And as we go on with the second half of this apology, look for it. Every now and then, just randomly, you see this kind of one-sided scrunch. So it's really hard to know when contempt is actually happening when part of his baseline is to communicate with this facial expression of contempt. So is he feeling contemptuous towards his actions? Is he actually looking down towards his actions? It's possible, but we can't look into that that much because it's part of his baseline. I'm disgusted. I was disgusted then when I did it. I'm disgusted now. I went and I sought out professional help. I had to go into therapy, and go into rehab. I had to ask God for his mercy and grace. I'm so sorry. But I'm committed to be a better man each and every day. I'm not asking for forgiveness. I'm truly sorry. 
We've been talking about universal emotions, and in the beginning of that clip, he said that he's disgusted. He was disgusted when he did it then, and he's disgusted now. And disgust is a universal emotion. In other words, everywhere in the world, people feel disgust and express it more or less the same way. Everywhere in the world, disgust looks something like this. Things close down because we want less input. We want less information of whatever's disgusting us, so we close everything down. We even see this in babies. When they eat something they don't like or an unpleasant smell, we see that face of disgust. Now, as he's saying this in the beginning, how disgusted he is by his actions, how disgusted he was back then, we're not seeing disgust. In fact, we're not seeing much of anything on his face. He's talking about how disgusted he was, but his tone is the same, his expressions are the same, no emotion is being communicated in that moment. Now, the absence of an expression doesn't in and of itself mean anything. Because everyone expresses themselves differently, it's possible that there are people out there who could talk about strong emotional experiences and you just don't see it on their face. It's not like he's saying, I was disgusted by my actions and we're getting a smile or something pleasant or his eyes are lighting up. That would be a lot worse. But in this case, you know, it's easy to look at it and go, dude, where's your emotions? You should be emotional about this. And I agree, it would be really nice if we saw some emotion, but in and of itself, the absence of an emotion doesn't tell me that much. However, what does tell me a lot is timing. You're telling me that you were disgusted then when you were doing it, you were disgusted in the same way that you're disgusted now. However, you seem to be forgetting that between then and now, you were asked about these allegations last year and you said that they were defamatory, incorrect, they were lies and that Cassie was just trying to get a quick payday. That was your statement. So I really feel in this moment that Diddy believes that as a whole, we must all be very stupid because we don't remember that he completely denied all these allegations and went as far as saying that these women were trying to get a quick payday. So in essence, all you're telling me is that if indeed you are as disgusted now as you were back then, you're really not that disgusted because clearly it wasn't enough for you to be sorry or to acknowledge these behaviors until there was evidence of them and now you're disgusted and sorry because you have to be. Then he talks about the measures that he took. But once again, look at the lack of detail, right? He went to therapy, he went to rehab, he asked God for mercy and grace. But okay, what did you learn from that? Give us concrete things that you learned from therapy. He says at the end that he's trying to become a better man each and every day. What are you doing specifically to do those things? So once again, we're getting these very global kind of basic statements without specific measures that he's taking to no longer do those things. Then as he says, I'm committed to being a better man each and every day, again, we get this no gesture. And again, it's the same thing as I said earlier, it's the same thing I've said in other videos, it's the same thing I will keep saying again and again. Could it mean that there's conflict and he's not committed to being a better man and he's not working on this? Absolutely, it can indicate that. But typically, it's so presumptuous to just jump to that conclusion and assume that that's all it could mean based on this one gesture. There isn't a cluster, we're not seeing a bunch of stuff, we're not digging in there and trying to say there's some inconsistencies. That's usually all these things tell us. They give us a clue as to, okay, something's going on here, let's ask questions. So it's possible that what he's saying is, I'm committed to being a better man each and every day, no questions, no doubt about that. This reminds me of a time where I was in a restaurant with my cousin and he asked if he could substitute his something for something, fries for potatoes, I don't know what it was. And the waitress said, absolutely. And she did this. And I always remember that example because what she meant was, no problem, don't even worry about that. But she was saying something positive while doing this. So just remember, this doesn't always mean lie or no or deception. Could mean, but not always. Now, instead of talking about what we are seeing and hearing in this video, let's talk about what we're not hearing and seeing in this video. When I look at an apology, and we've looked at a lot of apologies on this channel, there's something I'm paying a lot of attention for, and that thing is specifics. And I'm looking for two types of specifics. Specific accountability and specific measures to change something. So in a good apology, we get specific accountability. Here's what I'm sorry for, this specific thing. I should not have done that to this person, specifics. In this video, it's his blanket, I'm sorry. It's almost like he's apologizing to us, but don't apologize to us, apologize to specific victims. Now in the case of Cassie, this might be a little complicated because I've read some sources online that said that as part of the settlement, 
they're not allowed to mention each other's names. But even outside of that, it would be very easy for him to talk about that scenario or any of the other people who came out with these accusations and saying, because he said earlier, you know, I was at a low point in my life. Go into more detail. Why do you say that? What was happening? What did you do that you're regretting specifically? And to whom are you apologizing? Not just this blanket, I'm sorry. For what? And then the second thing is specific measures, because that's another place where he got suddenly very vague, right? I went to therapy, rehab, uh, and I asked God for grace and forgiveness. Okay, but what are the measures you're taking to make this right? What are the specific steps? How are you working on yourself? Have you reached out to these victims in this period of your life where you alleged you were disgusted? Did you reach out to the people that you hurt? Did you try to see if there's any way you can make it better? Did you settle monetarily with any of the people from your life back then besides Cassie who sued you? And even if he did, I'm not saying that would be enough by any means but give us those specific measures that you've been doing to change as opposed to these blanket things. Because from where I'm standing, you're saying that, you're, you know, every day you're trying to be a changed man, whereas a couple of months ago, you claimed publicly that they were all lying and trying to get a quick payday. So which is it? It can't be both. I wanna end by making three really important points about the security footage from the hotel hallway. And again, I'm not gonna play the clip for a few reasons. First. I don't need it to make these points. Second, I just don't want to give that a platform. It's horrible footage. So again, I'll leave a link in the description or you guys can look it up. Um, and also, I don't even know if I can play it. Like it's so violent that the whole video might come down if I, if I feature that. So anyways, for these reasons, I don't want to play it, but I want to make three points about it nonetheless because it'll really help me put everything into perspective. And the three points are as followed. The first two points prove the same thing. And that thing is that this was not an isolated incident. This has happened before. And the reason I know that is because the first time he struck her, she was very still. She felt it for she was very still. There wasn't surprise, there wasn't shock. That's something that unfortunately I'm very familiar with. It's someone who knows that behavior and knows that if they don't provoke it, it's their best odds of it de-escalating. So the fact that she's not reacting in a certain way allows someone to look at that and go, this is not the first time it happened. The second point, which essentially proves the same thing, is for lack of better words, his comfort with that behavior. There's no moment where we see him, oh my God, what did I do? How horrible. He just keeps leaning into that behavior. Like it's second nature for him. Like he's familiar with this type of behavior. They both seem familiar with this situation. And I think any of the viewers who work in law enforcement or family law or therapy or anything where you deal with this kind of trauma will be able to look at that footage and you can confirm in the comments that there's a familiarity with both of them in that scenario. The third point that I wanna make is a counter to anyone that might say that he was in a complete delusional state, that he was completely disconnected from reality. So whether it's him or a lawyer or someone in his defense might say something like that, I completely reject that hypothesis. I think he was very much in his right mind in that state. And the reason I know that, amongst other things, if you look at the video, there are certain clues for that, but chief among them is the fact that the entire time he's got one hand on his towel. That is not only a conscious behavior, he's consciously thinking about holding that towel up, but it's also a sign that he's thinking about public embarrassment which if you think about our human needs, everyone will agree that social standing is one of them, but it's not a basic primal human need. That's like food, water, survival, you know, shelter, these things. Those are all basic. When you're in a primal state, you look for those things, but you're not thinking of social standing or embarrassment. So the fact that the whole time he had his hand on his towel, to me suggests that there was conscious thought there. He's thinking about, public image. Oh, what if somebody walks in and sees me without my towel? He wasn't, in my opinion, in this rage-filled primal delusion. He knew exactly what he was doing. That's what I believe looking at that footage. Before we go to my conclusion, there's a really important difference that I want to highlight about this specific apology, especially for viewers who are reasonably new to the channel. And it's the fact that in this case, he's apologizing about a behavior that is proven and undeniably gross, disgusting, wrong, criminal, 
some apologies that we've looked at on the channel were for things where it wasn't proven or it was but there's some debate as to whether or not the person should be apologizing so these ambiguities could exist. This needed to be 100% an apology. It's undebatable that he owed a lot of people a serious apology and even with that apology it wouldn't erase these horrible things. With that said I still didn't approach the apology with bias. Of course there was bias towards his behavior, what he did on that video, but I came into the apology objectively saying, okay, let's see if this is going to be a legit heartfelt apology. Even if that wouldn't be good enough, is that what we're going to get? It is my personal opinion that that is not what we got. We got this ambiguous apology, no accountability, a serious lack of emotion, a serious lack of depth and thought and measures and all these things still wouldn't have been good enough, but even at that, we didn't get any of them. I unfortunately believe that what we saw in that video is the tip of the iceberg. I believe that this is someone who's participated in that kind of behavior more than that one time. I believe that the behaviors we saw in that video were a pattern, not only because the behavior suggested, but because I think that if it was just a one-time thing, he really would have made it extremely clear in the video that that has never happened any other time. But the fact that several people have alleged him of this kind of behavior and he denied all of them recently and now there's evidence of it happening, I think it kind of sheds light on all those occurrences. I believe that the behaviors we saw are conscious, but above all, I believe that he's not sorry that he did any of those things. He's sorry he got caught and the timing of this apology speaks volumes. The video comes out and a few days later, for the first time, we see some kind of him acknowledging that these behaviors were accurate. Whereas a couple of months ago, he had these massive denials saying that they were defaming him and they were just trying to get paid. In a massive twist of irony, where I think all this is gonna lead was perfectly summarized by Diddy on an Instagram post just last week where he posted three words, time tells truth. And that's exactly what I believe is gonna happen. In time, we're gonna find out just how bad and frequent these behaviors were. But until then, let me know what you thought about this in the comments and I will see you on the next one.